Serendipity is a word that means the unexpected discovery of something nice. And as such, I don't really think it should apply to visits to Britain's churches, because there you can always expect the unexpected. And the little church of San Anno behind me is no exception. Nestled in a slight hollow, just off the busy A483 main road down to Cardiff from the north, most people probably rush past it without a second glance. It's small, it's insignificant, it's not worth a visit. Well, they couldn't be more wrong. Just come with me and have a look at the inside. Inside the church, however, you are confronted with a marvellous old building. Over by the door, there's a genuine holy water stoop. And even the pews are ancient, because there's an inscription on one of them dating it back to at least 1681, and probably older than that. But the real glory of the church is behind me, that wonderful wooden screen decorated with a long row of saints and apostles with Christ in the center and these holy people worthy of commemoration on either side decorated also with intricate fretwork beautiful knots carved out of wood it really is a magnificent screen we can't be sure where it came from. There are no parish records recording how it was built or paid for or who did the work. For a long time it was thought that it came to the church, was purchased, when Abbey Cum Heer was dissolved and left to ruins. But examination of the screen shows that it is almost certainly Welsh work and Abbey Cum here may well have used English craftsmen. So it is more likely that it is original to the church. In which case we are left with a puzzle. You see, the parish in which this church stands is a very small one. It's in the valley of the river Ethon, and it's a mere four miles long by two miles wide. <laughs> and that's it. Even at its most populated, there were only about two or three hundred people living here. All of them farmers, Welsh upland farmers at that. So who was the generous individual or did they all get together to erect this screen to the glory of God? And if so, how fitting it is that it has survived down the centuries to our own era as a memorial to the people's love for God and as a declaration of their faith and trust in him.